In this part of the tutorial, we are going to sort our high score list. And the easiest way to sort it is simply to use the sort function on the list type in C Sharp. So to use that, we will have to do some different things. First of all, we will have to call the function under get scores. We'll have to write um, high scores dot sort and save. So if I will call this, it will give me an error message. And let's try to run this because right now the high score, the, the list type in C Sharp has no idea how it needs to sort um, the high score type that we just created. Normally when you sort integers, for example, it knows that one is less, uh, has a less value than two and three and so on. But it doesn't know what to look for when it sorts the high scores around. So we will have to define that. You can see if we play the game now, it will come up with this exception, argument exception, do not, um, yeah, this one does not implement the right interface. So it needs something called a generic comparer um, on it. So if we open up our script again and go to the high score script, uh, not a high score script, the high score, here we will have to add some functionality to it. We will have to make it implement um, something called an interface and that interface needs to be i comparable. So let's write i comparable and then we need to tell i comparable what kind of data it actually needs to compare. So that's like high score. And i comparable uses the high score, or the, sorry, the, the list uses i comparable when it needs to sort something. So when you write the name of the list dot sort it tries to use this i comparable interface function to sort the high scores or sort whatever that is on that list. So right now there is a red line because it says that high score does not implement the interface member i comparable. So right click on it, click on quick actions if you have Visual Studio and implement interface. If you don't have Visual Studio and you can't do this, you can simply just write public integer compare to and then high score other. And then, did, and then do not write the throw exception here. So now we need to fill out this compare to because compare to function is what the list is using when you write um, name of your list sort. It actually uses this compare to function to know where to place the different elements on the list. And the sort function works by default if you have integers in the list or some default uh, data type in the list. But if you have a type of object as we just created, we created like an, uh, our own class called high score and we're using them as objects. Uh, well, then the list has no idea how to compare it. It doesn't know if it needs to compare the name of the score, it needs to compare the date of the score, or if it needs to compare the score, like uh, the number value of the score. So we need to tell it how to do this. And we need to base this, um, this feedback to the list on free outcomes because there are free outcomes. The first thing that can happen is that the first is larger than the second. And the other outcome is like this, uh, the first is less than the second. And the third outcome is if the first is equal to the second. So first is the first element it compares and the second is the other element it compares. So it always takes two elements on the list and compare them. For example, it takes the first and the second element and see if, if, if one of them is larger than the other and takes the first and third element on the list and checks if one of them is larger than the other and so on. So this list, as you can see, compared to returns an integer. So you need to return a number based on the outcome. So the list is, is structured around three different numbers. If it returns minus one, then it knows that the other is larger, is, is less than uh, this score. So if we return minus one here, then we know that the first is larger than the second. So if we return, if the first is less than the second, then we return one. And if we know they're equal to each other, we return zero. So this is what the sorting algorithm inside the list is based on. It uses compare to, it asks, for a number. So if it compares, for example, the first and the second element. If the first element is larger than this, the second, then it returns minus run. Then it knows that it doesn't need to swap them. If the first element would be lower than the second, 
well then it returns one instead and then it knows that it needs to swap the second one with the first one because the second one is larger if it returns zero well then they're equal to each other and we don't need to swap them i hope this makes sense um we will make some if statements to make this a little more clear this is how we need to structure it if other which is our second that score is larger um, than this that score then we need to return one so if our second is larger than our first well then we need to return one Um, let's make one up here. If other dot score it's less than this dot score, then we return minus one. Let's just make an else if here actually. Okay, so now we know that. So the next thing we need to do is to compare the dates because what if two people has the same score? How are we going to figure out who's going to be on top of the list? Well, you can either look at the name and say, well, the, the guy with the first letter in the alphabet gets on top. So if someone is named Andy, he will usually most likely be on top of the others if they have the same score. But I don't think that's fair. I think it's more fair to put the guy on top that got the score first. So basically we will have to say else if other dot date is less than this dot date then we return minus one and else if other dot date is larger than this dot date then we return one okay so first we compare the scores if this if um the other score is less than this score, we return minus one and so on. When we're done re comparing the scores, here, if, if we if we get down here and, and this is not the case, then we're checking the dates. Well, these two guys both scored 10 points. So who got it first? And we return minus one if the other one the date is less and we return minus one if other date is larger. So if this one fails, well, then they got the same score on the same date so we will have to return return zero so we return zero at the end here because these two scores are 100 percent equal to each other and there's no point in swapping them around so let's save this and let's try to go back into unity and let's try to run this and see what happens Boom. and as you can see now I just added lots of hands because I didn't remove it from from um, fr from the code. But as you can see, all the one with larger scores are placed in the top here. And if you would go back into our high school manager, wasn't it? And change this one. Let's say we have like 850 points. And this is uh, Jim that has that. Save it and run our game again. then Jim should be placed in between the thousands and the other points. And now we have a sorted high score. But right now we have, how many scores do we have? We have eight scores. Let's just run this a couple of times. So we get like 11 scores or something. Okay, so now we have 11 scores and we would like to um, restrict this so that we can only we only have like for example top 10 or something so to get the top 10 we will have to add a new field so up here inside our high score manager we will have to add a new public integer um, top scores and this top scores is going to be or top ranks or something top ranks I think I'm going to call it is going to be used inside our show scores function so let's see if we could find that here and in here, we'll have to make a for loop and make sure that we don't run through uh, more than the top number of ranks. So there's an easy way to do this. Instead of using the high scores that count, we'll simply just use the top ranks here. 
So let's save this and jump back into Unity. And if we select our high score manager, we will say we want a top 10. And if we play the game, boom, then we only get the top 10, even though there are more scores here. If I sum, if I would say we want a um, top 11, you see that there is 11 scores. As you can see here, there is 11. But right now, if I do like this, I guess if I want a top 50, it will give me an index out of range, I think. Yeah, then I get this argument out of range exception. So we'll have to make a little if statement to fix this. In here, we'll have to make an if statement, say if i is less or equal to scores that count minus one. Okay, what is called high scores that count minus one. So if our i, the value we are using to access the array is less or equal to the amount of total high scores actually, well then we wanna show it. Let's try again. Now we wanna try to show a top 50 and we don't have 50 high scores that for sure. So it just shows me those 15 that it's, that's there. Okay. I am going to wrap up this part. In the next part, we are going to have a look at um, how we can add a scroll bar so we can scroll in our high scores. And later, we are also going to have a look at some uh, small fine tuning.